Hello dear friends, I hope you people will be fine and enjoying our sound health. Today I am going to upload another interesting and informative video related to scaps and the simulation of paraviscite solar cells in scaps 1D. So uh, let me share my screen with all of you so that today I can start for my today's lecture. Okay, uh, dear friends, you can see now my screen has been visible to everyone. So today I'm going to talk about how we can compute uh, carrier diffusion length and uh, carrier lifetime uh, in SCAPS 1D uh, in simulation and mathematical modeling way. So particularly uh, before the start of today's lecture, I would like to uh, provide a brief detail uh, about the uh, basic quantities like carrier diffusion length, carrier lifetime, and diffusivity, or we can say talk about uh, defect density. Basically, mathematically, we can compute the carrier diffusion length by using this mathematical formula, carrier defect, uh, absorber defect density with multiplication of carrier uh, lifetime. Uh, mathematically, we can compute by uh, multiplication of diffusivity or diff defect density of absorber layer with carrier lifetime, then we can compute the uh, carrier diffusion length of electron and holes. This is the mass mathematical formula that is normally used for a computation of carrier uh, diffusion length of electron and holes. But today I'm going to talk about how we can compute uh, carrier diffusion length and the carrier lifetime of electron and holes by the variation of defect density of absorber layer in SCAPS 1D. Uh, mainly important thing is that uh, both these quantities, like when we talk about the carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime of electron and holes, both these quantities of paroviscite solar cell is mainly dependent upon the defect density value of the absorber layer. Like uh, uh, we can say that if the defect density of the absorber layer will be higher, both the carrier diffusion length of electron and holes and the carrier lifetime of electron and holes will be lower. So ultimately what will happen what phenomena will occur while we are going to change the defect density and while we are going to compute the defect density, uh, uh, compute the carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime of electron and holes, the high defect density will tend to decrease, degrade both these parameters like carrier lifetime and carrier diffusion length. And ultimately, what will happen in case of high defect density, both these parameters will tend to degrade. And ultimately, what will happen, we will see that higher surface recombination and higher interfacial recombination. Both uh, recombination rate will tend to increase with the increment of defect density and with the decrement of carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime of paraviscite device. And ultimately what will happen, the paraviscite device performance will tend to decrease. Uh, it was a question from some Bangladesh students, how we can compute the carrier diffusion length and the carrier lifetime in SCAPS 1D. So particularly I'm making this video for all those students who have queries related to computation of carrier diffusion length and lifetime in SCAP 1D. That's why I have prepared a tentative draft for explanation. For, so now I'm going to move toward the SCAPS 1D so that I can show you how uh, we can vary the defect density and how we can compute both these uh, particular values, carrier lifetime, of electrons and uh, carrier diffusion length of electrons and holes and carrier lifetime of electron and holes in SCAPS 1D. So now I'm going to switch my screen um, with SCAPS 1D simulation uh, software so that I can show you how we can uh, vary the defect density and how we can compute both carrier diffusion length of electrons and carrier lifetime of electron and holes in SCAPS 1D. So now I'm going to switch my screen with uh, towards the SCAPS 1D simulation model. Okay. 
Okay, uh, this is the first interface of SCAPS 1D. We know that when we are going to start the simulation, we always uh, uh, need to interface this session. So uh, I have already prepared a tentative uh, built-in um, uh, Sparrow Sky structure. I just need to uh, vary the defect density values and I need to compute the defect, uh, I need to compute the carrier lifetime and carrier diffusion length in SCAPS 1D. So, uh, okay, uh, next, uh, as I am already explaining that carrier diffusion length and lifetime of electron and holes are mainly dependent upon defect density, defect density or diffusivity of absorber layer. So we need to vary the defect density in absorber layer. Like I'm going to change what I'm going to change the defect density in my absorber layer. In this structure, uh, this is an IP structure, plane structure in which methyl ammonium tin triiodide is absorber layer. Copper thiocyanide is HTL and titanium dioxide is ETL. So I'm going to open this absorber layer. Okay. First of all, main important thing is that we need to check that from which chess session we need to uh, change the values. Like in my right side of my scaps panel, you can see that uh, uh, you can see that uh, my uh, this session is related to the recombination model. You can see uh, band to band recombination, radiative recombination, etc. I'm not talk, going to talk about these values, but we are more interested over here. Like you can see that over here, it is written as total defect density. This is the defect density of the absorber layer. Like in case of tin, in case of uh, uh, methyl ammonium tin iodide, um, uh, the uh, lab experimental session has shown that the optimized defect density is basically 1 raised power 14 or 15. Uh, so I'm going to start from 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. One person can vary this defect density value and compute over here. You can see that tau n and tau p. This is what this is basically the carrier lifetime of electrons and holes. And over here is ln. And over here is LP. What it's, this is what representation. This is the carrier uh, length or uh, diffusion length of electron and holes. As I have already stated that uh, this particular value is mainly responsible for the control of uh, these particular values, tau n and ln. And both these values will tend to degrade, uh, will decrease with the increment of this value. Now we need to check that how we can compute both uh, tau n and uh, carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime with the variation of defect density of absorber layer in SCAPS 1D. So uh, we, we can start from over here, like when defect density was 15, the computed value uh, simul uh, simulatically, uh, the uh, tau n or you, we can say that lifetime was one raised power two uh, nanosecond. The uh, carrier lifetime is computed in uh, nanosecond, whereas the carrier diffusion length is computed is in micrometer. Now I'm going to change this value, like over here, I am going to put value 16. Okay. Okay, you can see that now the values of carrier lifetime has been changed and uh, same with carrier diffusion length. It means what in my previous when defect density was 15, uh, both carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime values were higher. But in case of 16, when the defect density is higher, uh, what we are getting, the carrier diffusion length and the carrier lifetime is going to be degraded. Now, next, I'm going to change this value from 16 to 17. Same phenomena will happen and we can compute easily the carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime of electron and holes. Now you can see that when the defect density has been increased to 17, uh, the carrier lifetime of electrons and holes and the carrier diffusion length of electron and hole has been dramatically degraded. It means what uh, there is a inverse relationship between carrier uh, between the absorber defect density and the carrier diffusion length and the carrier lifetime. In short, when the higher defect density uh, of the absorber will be, uh, there will be lower carrier diffusion length and 
uh, carrier lifetime, ultimately the performance will degrade due to higher interfacial recombination and surface recombination. Similarly, I'm going to set over here the value of 19, defect density absorber 19. Uh, okay, now we can see that we have extremely poor carrier uh, diffusion length, like values are in negativity, negative, and in case of lifetime, it has been dramatically degraded. So similar way, one person can easily compute the carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime for electron and holes in scales 1D with the variation of this defect density. Now I have computed some graphical representation in order to support my theoretical concept how uh, effectively uh, defect density of absorber layer actually affect the carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime. So now I'm going to switch my uh, screen towards the graphical representation to wind up my today's lecture and compute the uh, basic results. Okay, now uh, I'm going to show you some graphical representations. Okay. These graphical representation has been computed with the same way. One person can compute these graph in Excel, but I strongly recommend to compute these graph in origin because origin software is one of the key and important software that can be used for the computation of graphical representation in uh, for solar cells. So uh, it can be seen that I have a three graphical representations over here. This is the uh, carrier diffusion length of electron. Uh, this is the carrier diffusion length of holes. And uh, this is the carrier lifetime of electron and holes. Importantly, you can see that uh, in x-axis, we have the defect density and the variation uh, of parameter on, on y-axis. When the defect density was lowered 12, uh, you can see that in case of all three graphical representations, the carrier uh, diffusion length was higher for electrons, was higher for holes, and lifetime was greater. With the increment of defect density, we can see that there is exponentially decreasing curve. It is exponentially decreasing curve, and it can be seen that from high defect density, like one raised per 17 of absorber layer, all three important parameters like carrier diffusion length of electrons and holes and lifetime of electron and holes were degraded. The ultimate will what happen with the high defect density, these three parameters will tend to decrease and it will increase the surface recombination and interfacial recombination. And ultimately we will have low JC, VOC, fill factor and PEC value. So in this way, in this simulation analysis, one person can easily compute the effect of defect density on carrier diffusion length and lifetime of electrons and holes, or we can easily compute uh, how defect density has a deep impact on carrier lifetime and carrier diffusion length. And this is the main and important reason when we have uh, higher defects on surface of absorber layer, we have poor absorption capability. One person can confirm this uh, theory via quantum efficiency analysis. When the defects are higher, we will definitely have lower curves per quantum efficiency that actually represents we have poor absorption capability. When we have poor absorption capability, we will have uh, what? We will have more surface defects we will have more absorber layer defects and ultimately we will have a lower carrier diffusion length and lifetime and the surface recombination and interfacial combination rates will be higher and ultimately performance will be lower in case of not only for 10 in, in case of uh, lid and mixed parovskite as well. I hope this session will be very helpful for all those students who are actually trying to know how we can compute the carrier diffusion length and carrier lifetime in SCAPS uh, simulation model or mathematical model. Thank you very much for listening to me, supporting me. Take care. Allah Hafiz.